we're upstairs tonight, and so we're uh, we're running on what we call official church schedule mode, uh, which means that you wait patiently until enough chairs fill up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but uh, we have enough, so yeah. we can start. And uh, so good to have uh, BCA here again today with us, and we want to welcome you <clears throat> to the home of North Baptist Church. This is where we hold our services up here. And I was giving Carl a little bit of a tour earlier, and he's going like, wow, huh? Because we do have so much more here. We're not just a church. We have a genealogical library and research center. And apparently now we have a translation center. Uh, <laughs> trying to, there, there's some great software out there that just ease things. For the uh, did some uh, documents for the Brockton Library Foundation, and Brenda was very shocked when I told her exactly how long I spent on it. It was all six minutes, and I translated into three different languages. Software is great. Technology is our friend. <clears throat> Except if you forget to plug something in, then it's a mess. But uh, I'm glad that you're here tonight, and. Um, if you think that there's nothing going on in Brockton, then you are totally dis unattached to the world at this point. There's a lot going on. Um, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, the 27th, this city is going to be buzzing with activities. And so if you want to catch and find out where all the information is, uh, one of the things you can do is you can go to the uh, happeninginbrockton.com and I try to get everything that is sent to me posted up there. Something came in uh, about 3.30 this afternoon and it's already been updated there. And it's something that's happening Tuesday. It's the Lebanese Independence Day and they have a flag, they have a flag ceremony down at the City Hall Plaza. So that, I found it on Facebook because I'm friends with somebody that's Lebanese. And so I grabbed the picture and stuck it on our website. And uh, it'll come off quickly. So usually as soon as things pass, we try and drop that which has gone by. Because way too often when you go to an information website, you find stuff that's there forever and ever. Right. I went out years, yes, because I went on one the other day, and they still had stuff from 2017. Oh, God. So who's keeping track of that? Well, I know it's not me, so um, I've also taken it off my list of where to go look to see what's going on, because if they're living in the past, they're of no use to us at this point in time. <laughs> <clears throat> Unless it's a fundraiser and the link is still good. And that's one of the things we've been able to add at the Library Foundation, PayPal. People can donate now. And they can even use one of those fancy QR codes. Those are so easy to build. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we want to try and keep current. And that's why we gather like this, to find out what's going on. Like finding out about the, that Lebanese uh, Independence Day um, ceremony on Tuesday. It was like, oh, that's pleasant. That's something... There's a lot of people may be there. And, of course, on the 27th, there's all kinds of things going on at the library. At and the at, library. at the library. This, yeah, you, you, I, I got confused just looking at what was going on at the library. But then you see what's going on at uh, the City Hall Plaza and surrounding areas. Um, oh, no, i got to get the name right. Brockton Downtown Association? Yeah, Downtown Brockton Association. Yeah. Okay, so they... I just got a map from them, and I'm like, oh, my. Yeah. You, yes, you sent it to me, Ann, but I actually got one, you know, I got it, and it's before it happened, so I, it's, uh, which is, sometimes we have people that send out the emails at the last second. I only get 2,000 to 3,000 a day. So to weed through them, and I have to weed through them uh, for business purposes, but... Uh, I, I, I want to get things out early. And so that's what you'll find when we do the, uh, I'll take a quick tour of a couple of the websites tonight. Seeing that we're up here, 
and the tools are available to do it. We can see what's out there. And um, then we have, let's see, others will have something to say and just come on up here and eventually you'll find yourself on air or at least on, you, at least on YouTube. And uh, <clears throat> it's all kind again, all kinds of things are going on. Here, we, one of the things we were working on today earlier was closing, officially closing up the garden, uh, the community garden we have. And I'm standing here realizing I forgot to do one thing. I forgot to take the sign down. We left it up all last winter, so it took a little bit of a beating, and I was told to bring it in, and I forgot to do that today. So that'll be on Saturday's list. <laughs> Um, let's see. Well, one of the things that so many groups need is money. Okay. Now, if we were here for a service, I could possibly preach for you a, uh, a message on, um, how the love of money is the root of all evil. Some people mistranslate that and they say money is the root of all evil and it is not. There is nothing wrong with money. We all need it. We are all with organizations that need it. And so we need to find a way to get it. You know, as when we have our used book sale for the David Allen Lampert Library and the Friends of Irish Research, I can, I'm pretty sure our uh, Brockton Library friends will tell us the same thing, that you may sell a lot of stuff, but you don't get a lot of money for it. You know, if you're buying something for a dollar, if you're selling it for a dollar, now it doesn't, it takes a lot of sales to make it a really good day. Now, I don't know what you call a good day. I've done, we've done yard sales over the years. And sometimes when we do a yard sale, at the end of the day, we've made maybe $150. And you're looking at all the work that went into it. But I can tell you, promote it. Every event promoted. When we lived in New Hampshire, we promoted the yard sale we were going to have. We even took out ads on TV wow. for our yard sale. It cost me about $30 to do so. <laughs> it was the local cable company. And um, that yard sale, over $1,800. It. it was absolutely worth it. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> mind you, I was selling computers and everything there, so it was great. Uh, but I cleared out part of my garage. That was the best part of it. But um, we need to find funds. We need to find donors. It, it's always nice, but I don't know about you, but I've yet to find my rich uncle. I haven't even found a rich aunt that's going to leave me lots of money to live on and all that. And none of our groups seem to find those type of people. We find everyday people. And so that's why we make things available, like being able to donate via PayPal and, you know, uh, twenty dollars at a time or even ten dollars at a time. It adds up, and we've we've been doing it here very successfully at the church for at least eight years now. And we have some people that do not live in this area; they live in other parts of the country that regularly send in a gift to the church for its ministries via PayPal. And so it's nice every once in a while to go look at PayPal and see how much is there and say, transfer to the bank, you know? And it, it's helped. It's been a great thing. But when we get into some of our nonprofit organizations, we need to find grants. We need to find somebody that's going to provide us funds. Now, locally here for cultural events, we have the Cultural Council. Um, we've been a recipient of two of their grants. I have one that's before them right now that hopefully they will approve so that we can put on events so that we can enhance the culture here in Brockton. And it's very specific, but they're not the only source of funds. So uh, several years ago for one of the other organizations that I work with, um, I came across this thing called Grant Station. Now, it's, it's web-based, and it's across the entire country. So we want to take a look at what you can do with it. 
and find with it. I have, I have, I have yet to personally go and go through the process to find a grant that applies to one of my organizations. But we had with um, Life Transforming Leadership Foundation, we had somebody that was going to write the grants and did write grants for us. And so I did the research and found all these grants. I think I found about seven of them. And they were supposed to go through them, apply for them. I think we got one small grant, but a small grant is better than no grant. Hold on a second, is that poetry? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it is. Anyway, so Grant Station. So this is their website. It is a paid service. Uh, normally, it's seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars a year. Yeah, I know. I saw that look on a few people's faces. However, every year they run a sale a couple of times, mm -hmm. and guess what? They're running a sale right now. And if you're uh, when, if you get interested in this, there's going to be two offers. One is, you know, you want to look through it. You'll come over and make an appointment with me. We'll go through my account, and you know, I can help and pull out grants for anybody. But right now, I think the sale. I'll send you the email. I think it's $169 for the year, or $199. I forget. We'll look later on because I can open up my email and it'll remind me. But again, that happens every once in a while. So the person can have, if they're going to be more active in grant see, you know, seeking for grants, this is one of the ones they do. But as you see in the page there, it lets you do multiple things. And I hope you're seeing it. Yeah. You are? Okay, that's good. I forgot to verify that it was there. But it's find, build, write, and win. This package that you get all allows you to go through the whole process. It helps you write the grants. That's what many people fear doing is writing the grants because it's got to be very specific as to how you do it. So this will help you. And so you have your personal login. Thank you. Uh, my password is blocked out so you can't see it. Um, <laughs> uh, I use this through our subsidiary of the church, a mission board that we took over, Gospel Text Mission, uh, where we distribute signs that you see around here all over the country. Uh, we even drive up to Alaska for three months every several years and just visit churches and we give away the signs. You know, so that's, nobody understands that thing where you give things away. But I'm looking to see maybe there's some sort of grant that's going to help us out because we need a new van. So, <clears throat> it has valuable tools here besides looking for grants, but it has webinars and it has classes that you can sign up for to take, to learn how to write grants, how to research for grants, everything. Uh, this one is called, uh, hold on a second, oh, there it is, Writing Capacity Building Grant Proposals, it's coming up. Today? Oh, I think we missed it. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> they have it all the time. Oh, okay. So, so it's like revolving. It's revolving. They have a whole library of things that you can actually go and download. And, you know, when you're a member, and that's the thing, these things would be as a member. So if there were something, you know, if we wanted to do it sometime, we could probably just, you know, come here and. Everybody can take that one class, you know, but that's not the ideal way of doing it. Uh, but they make webinars, they make some of their webinars available publicly. So you add whatever it is, you're signing up for Proposal Writing 101, you add it to your cart, you pay for the class, and then you can download the class, watch it, and do all kinds of things. All right, so as we go across the menu, you got to find grant makers. That's the first one. That's always the one they want to look for. And it breaks it out. There's U.S. charitable organizations that offer grants, and then there's federal grants, and there's state grants. And they even include some here for Canadian, uh, and then also some of the international, I think, has been something they've added new. Um, and then we have the build the strategy. And so here we can see 
the search for it. We can see what our objectives would be for some of the grants that we'd want to write. And you can actually design your own infrastructure for your organization. So you don't have to keep redoing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Do it one time, you save it, and off you go. And then we have the next one is next tab has where you're writing the proposals. And even has a letter of inquiry, which is always a good thing to do is to send it out to find out, let, send out a communication to find out if it's really still active. Particularly in this time period where we're still dealing with COVID, a lot of companies have put their grants on hold because a lot of things can't be done in certain parts of the country. And then you can do your entire full grant proposal there. Do it all online, save it, put copy it onto a Word document, and off you go, emailing it or mailing it in, whichever is the requirement for the company. And then you have their online education. So uh, there's a recorded broadcast training. You've got free recorded broadcast training. That's always my favorite spot. If it's free, I'm likely going to find something I need there. But you can also do, just like you would at home if you're watching TV and nothing was on, and say, I'm going to go push the button and I'm going to go on demand. I'm going to pay for something to watch that I want to watch. And so this is there as well. And then we have public resources and they have newsletters, regular emails. I received... I think two or three of them today um, for different things from them, which is really useful. And then uh, here we go into Massachusetts government grants and loans. All right. This is a huge page. Actually, this, this couldn't fit on one picture. It would have to be four pictures in order to show you all the things that would be in that particular topic. Now, one of the ones that's in there is the Cultural Council grants. Made sense, okay? Um, and so I clicked on a few of the links to see where they took me, and amazing how it took me just to exactly where I expected it to go. So here's a couple of things that are available, the links. Now, let's see if I can do this right and make it work. It would be wonderful if it did. Take me out to my browser. You see the third one down is the Secretary of State's office. They have several different areas within it that uh, are used. And let's see how long my browser is going to take to come up today. I see it spinning, so that's a good thing. But it's never fast enough. That's why I should have opened it ahead of time. So, oh, there, nope, that's the U.S. Charitable. I hit the wrong button. It, you know, it'll eventually pop up. Actually, I see it now down the bottom. I think I see it. Technology is a wonderful thing when it works. But sometimes it has a mind of its own. Even if you are experienced at technology and you wonder why in the world is it not working? But it, it will get there eventually. But again, this is a very long list of organizations and government uh, entities within Massachusetts. part of the Commonwealth, okay? So we wrote to the libraries he wanted to come to. One of them responded immediately, and was in, they were interested in having him on board no matter what, okay? So that helps. Another time, we had this a remarkable person that lived in the city of Broughton, and he wrote an amazing grant, and this was 
oh, a decade and a half ago, and it was for $750,000. Unfortunately, the city didn't, you know, he didn't get it at first, but it was with um, the Department of Communications, anyway, for the, the government. But um, it was, it was going to be, but he needed letters of support. So I just want to mention that do not hesitate to have those, you know, in, in, your, in your sites. For example, if you, if you want to do something, you want someone for support, and in this case, we were actually, we, we went to the library, and the director of the library time was a remarkable woman, and she wrote a fabulous letter for him, and there was a, the Chamber of Commerce wrote a letter for him. So that's, I just want to, you know, yep. mention, ask, ask, ask. Yeah, and I just think because if you don't ask, yes, oh thanks, you get exact absolutely nothing. So here's the here the page came up, and look, that's just Massachusetts. Now you're saying what are those things? Well, those all those green buttons that you see, those are grants. Guess what? With a grant, you're not refunding it. It's yours. Yeah. It's for that uh, uh, event. Um, if you need technical training assistance, that's a light blue. That's on a few of them there. Um, some of them just have information, which is good because it points you in the right direction. But again, that's right there. That alone is just for Massachusetts. So it's pretty impressive. So with the charitable, it gives you uh, different things to do, what you want to be, uh, your scope. Is it going to be, are you going to search for just in Massachusetts or are you going to search in New England? These grant writers cover broad areas. And there's, for me, the ones I want to look for are the ones that have an interest in Massachusetts. Now, some of the national ones will say, we offer grants in and they list five or six states. Some of these big corporate companies, they will, they will have uh, grants available, but they only will offer the grant in states where they have an office. So if they don't have an office in this state, eh, don't waste your time looking because it's not going to be there to help you. So you can look in the different areas of interest. And again, this is vital. If you really want this presentation, I'll send it to you too. I'll send you the email of it with it later if you want it. Um, you know, immediately we think of arts cultures, and that's that's a big one for us. We have all multiple sources for that. Civic affairs. Oh, okay, that's a good thing to do. You know, you know, there's all kinds of different organizations that are doing things that are good for our community. Um, we're seeing. I think a little bit more of that right now because of what we've gone through with COVID that people are more uh, open-minded to helping out in their community a little bit. And uh, so we may be able to come up with some events that, hey, let's find a grant to do it. That would be so much nicer. Uh, and it is not, and this is what was interesting, is somehow they put religion and ethics together. What, what can I say? I'll leave it alone. Target populations. So if there's a particular population you're trying to reach, you can cr uh, put the criteria in there as you're searching for grants. So there are some that are very specific for children and youth. There are some that are very specific for the elderly and uh, for veterans and military affairs, okay? We cannot do enough for our veterans. So, And then, of course, the different ethnic groups. There's all kinds of them there. Uh, and, of course, now we'll see the one that I think will be very popular in their search engine for them now is the one that's immigrant and refugee. You know, what can we do to help those that are now showing up on our shores? Type of grant maker. Okay, so this is who's giving away the money. Are you looking at a corporate foundation or um, you know, a government entity? Uh, are you looking for some sort of society or association or even religious you know, um, denominations will have uh, grants available for ones that are you know, uh, in a denominational structure? 
I, I really have no idea what that is. We're an independent church. This, you're looking at the entire organization here. Yeah. You know, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of pastors are like, how in the world do you survive when it's just your one church? We never know the answer to that, except that it's God that takes care of us, and so we will settle with that answer, because, you know, that's a really good one. And uh, I always turn around and ask them, it's like, well, how do you survive putting up with all the layers of hierarchy that you're going to deal with? <laughs> and they go like, well, you just deal with it. And I'm like, okay, um, thanks, but no thanks. All right, so I'm going to hear some sample information about a grant. Now, of course, this is one of particular interest to us today. This is the Earth Force Sustainability Challenge. Okay, I really have no idea. It's fictitious. All right, it's for children between uh, 8 and 18, researching in their communities. It's, you know, you start getting into soil health. Now, I remember in junior high and high school getting involved in some very elaborate um, science experiments and things like that. And I'm, I, I haven't been inside a school for a number of years, but I'm pretty sure they still do the thing. I remember I wanted to be in a special chemistry class in high school. Now, I wasn't allowed to be in that class because the teacher was my second cousin, but he was the best chemistry teacher in the school. And every year they did stuff with rockets. And so he had a special permit from the Canadian government to be able to get rocket fuel delivered to the high school. Okay? I wanted to be in that class so badly. But they wouldn't let me. So I had to settle for another chemistry teacher. <sighs> that would have been cool. Building a rocket and launching it with real rocket fuel. All right, there's a grant idea for somebody. All right, so one of the things too, the geographic, this is the information about the grantee, the grantor, the one that's sending you the money. You get all the information, you have the phone numbers, you have their plan, the deadlines, everything is right there. So it's kind of, it's very thorough. All right, so again, I mentioned about the fees and uh, I'm glad to help anybody to go through this. And if you want a copy of the email I received today with the sale, uh, email me later tonight and I'll send you, I'll forward it to you right away. All right, so finding funding is always important. What do you do with it? Well, that's kind of up to you. You want to have some really good things and Find out how fast this is and if I can type it correctly. It's really bad when you can't type the website you worked on. But then again, one has to be able to see it to, to be able to do it. And you know what? There's no M in happening. Okay. This is where I'm supposed to have some sort of dramatic music playing, you know, while, it, while we wait for me to see the keys and, and hope that it comes up. There it is. So, happening in Brockton, again, a very simple website. We keep announcing our meetings. So, you know, tomorrow this will change to our next meeting for December. Of course, uh, you know, Brockton is open, is available, and... Yes, you can scan the QR code right there on your computer and it works. And we have the poetry event coming up this Saturday. And then we have the Lebanese Independence Day. <clears throat> I stole this from your I stole this from your fa Facebook, Shirley, so <laughs> I, I, I didn't think you'd mind. <laughs> um, I, I was reading I was saw it when Joyce yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the uh, it's funny, I got, I got called by the um, Boston Globe to write an, an op-ed for them on a particular topic that will be of interest to some of the people here, is that the Plainville, Connecticut, uh, Plainville, Connecticut, Plainville Casino wants to upgrade and, re, and change to 
uh, having slot tables or tables and uh, games and all that. So, yeah, just not the slot machines. So the Globe called me today asking me if I would write an op-ed in opposition to it. They figured we know you've written on this before and uh, you know what to say. So th that'll be delivered to them next week and then probably two weeks after that it'll be on there. Because there is a bill that's being developed, designed by one of the, somebody up at the Boston. All right, so here we go. We got the 27th, the big event going, and there's lots of information. And uh, this picture will be replaced a little bit later tonight. It's, it's funny, we translated it into three languages, and we found out the only problem was in the English language. There was a typo in the English. And uh, thankfully, the software translate, doing the translation into Portuguese, Spanish, and Haitian Creole, Ignored the error in English. <laughs> so, um, and then I just got this information, you know, about five o'clock today uh, about more details of what's going on. So that's there. We got the local author event coming up on Monday the 29th. That is by Zoom. So, and then uh, I don't know, the karaoke night at the Brockton Library Foundation. All of a sudden, somebody said, oh, Richard has a wonderful voice. And I'm looking at them going like, they've never heard me sing. I was, was going to ask you whether you're going to sing. And, no, there was somebody else named Richard sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if you want to empty out a place, I'll come in and sing a solo. And that'll clear the place. <laughs> And then the, the library's got all kinds of stuff going on. Nice. Yeah. 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 So, and we have uh, closed down the, uh, the, the garden for the year. Well, except if you want beets, come during the daytime. There's still lots of beets. And, uh, but we covered over several of the beds today and, and that. And then, of course, I, I got this idea one night saying, you know, it's nice to know all the stuff that's going on in Brockton. But what about the businesses in Brockton? Well, we're trying to bring business. And that will be one of the emphasis on the, the, the event on the 27th is there's going to be many small businesses there. And uh, so we've, we've met Ernie and uh, his limo, and he's going to be there at the event on the 27th. So... Um, I, th I think we were taking auditions to be the Grinch. My wife said I'd be a good one for it, uh, although I'm built more like Santa Claus. Um, but, uh, you know, so I got thinking, so let's start putting some of our businesses on here because this is a place we want people to know what's going on in Brockton, not just events, but our businesses. And having a business, it is important that people know who you are. I remember, uh, again, when I came back to the States in 1992, I crossed the border with literally $500 in my pocket. That was it. And I was opening a computer store, and I was the 13th computer store in Dover, New Hampshire. <laughs> it was a success. But I remember that first year I was there, because of sales that came in just by being on Main Street and just, you know, developing relationships with businesses, I was doing quite well. And, but I had this brilliant idea, well, I didn't have it, some salesperson had it when they came in my office, about doing ads, running ads on the radio and that. And that first year, I spent $50,000 on radio ads. When I asked people when they came in and bought a computer, how did you learn about me? Zero came in because of radio ads. Wow. It was all word of mouth. Somebody came in and was very happy with what they got. They told somebody. And in years later, when we were in Central Mass, um, there was this lady who was in our church, 
and I got her her first computer. And then she told her neighbor across the street, who then had me coming in and fixing his computer. And he told somebody, and he told somebody, that one little lady in our church, the link of new clients was 17 long. Exactly. It's, you know, it's, rep, rep, you know, people giving referrals. Yep. And I don't know about you, but every time I'm out there visiting anywhere else, I'm telling people, you got to come see Brockton again. We've changed. I saw them painting a building in downtown Brockton today, and I'm going like, I'm not sure why they're painting that. You know, but uh, maybe just to make it look better, somebody's painting it, and that's good. You know, we, we want to have civic pride yeah. mm -hmm. all right we want people to come to brockton and so we will do things like this and that's why you know the different groups that, and foundations are here are promoting you know brockton and what's happening um it, it, it's so important for us to do uh, i guess at some point now that i've learned how to translate into multiple languages maybe i'll have to do this in multiple languages <laughs> um, we did do it at the um for the Brockton Library Foundation, which um, has had a very wonderful banner. I don't know how long they've had that banner, banner but it offered a uh, website on it. I'm, th I'm so glad the email worked. I'm just gonna double check to make sure I've spelled everything correctly and I missed only one thing, I missed the period. By one part. Nope. I missed more than that. Oh, this is this this is this is this is being recorded and, and I, I misspelled Brockton. Um, that's not a good thing. Uh, I have to watch what I'm doing here. You gotta love when you do things live. You know. <clears throat> I suppose if I wasn't giving tours, I could have come in here and had this all queued up so it would just go look so smooth. Oh, and I, I, I want to mention something else. When people are doing the grants, uh, sometimes, it, you know, if you, let's say you, you're doing the grant and you want to have a speaker come or an author or something, letting um, the, the, how would I say, you know, in your application, you know, in some way, letting them know the background, have a resume of the speaker or the, uh, author, for example, um, any kind of awards, recognitions they want, uh, what do I want to call them, reviews, mm -hmm. that that also be advantageous and, you know, and supportive of your, um, and again, how are you going to promote it? Mm -hmm. Because, um, yes, word of mouth is still the greatest way to promote it. I always think of the most successful restaurant in the United States of America was on the North Shore in Massachusetts, and it was called the Hilltop Steakhouse. Anyway, and yes, yes, and it was just everybody always knew about them, and it was just word of mouth. And when I think that they never accepted a credit card until like you know that you know they had no choice, and that was because and they had bank you know the <laughs> the truck, the armor truck come with because they made so much money. <laughs> you think about that, it's pretty I miss, amazing. I miss them. No, oh, they were wonderful, weren't they? But anyway, um, but the reason I'm saying that is again, it, the, the word of mouth is a real big part of it, but any kind of way that you promote something, whether it's flyer, ads, um, uh, several little restaurants here in Broughton and you know, throughout have the ads on their placemats, mm -hmm. uh, you know, things of, of that nature. That Those are the first two. Uh, Council on Aging has many members and they have some ads in there and then you have the church bulletins and what have you. So. Yep, there's all, all the kinds of opportunities to promote Excuse the me, businesses, yes. you know, within Brockton. So here, this is the new website for the foundation and again, it's... it's it's uh, it's really simple. Again, the picture will be fixed there because of the typo in English. The, of course, now the books, the um, gift shop is now open, so that's thrilling. I was there opening day and bought some books. 
I've actually I bought two two of the books I bought were about Bobby Orr. <laughs> and I met Bobby Orr before he became a Bruin. Oh. So he stayed in my uh, we were living in a duplex in Richmond Hill, Ontario, and he stayed in my in the other half of the duplex. We had one of his teammates staying with us. But one one of the things we did was of course we I was able to go ahead and translate this into Haitian Creole, Portuguese, Spanish, and French. <coughs> and uh, so if we were to go ahead and click on the French one, it will pop up the website in French. <laughs> so <coughs> I could not I could not find anything in my software or even on Google Translate where they do um, Cape Verdean Creole. So, yeah. But again, my understanding is, you know, everybody in Cape Verde can read Portuguese. And just like in Haiti, everybody, they learn French in school. But uh, I was surprised to find that Haitian Creole was available. And so, like, that's, like, perfect here for Brockton. So that's something, you know, we can do. And I'll do on the Happening in Brockton site as well. Just so, you know, we, we want to make sure we include everybody. So... That's a lot of stuff already. Yeah. Now, there's other things going on that we may not know about yet. How many, how many got an email from Buzz Around today? I did. I've been getting them on a regular basis. You getting a wreck? I haven't checked today. You know? Yeah, I did get mine today because yeah. it has, and there's, there's about five events on their, ca on their calendar that I had no clue existed in Brockton. Now, they're not five I would go to, but it'd be nice. it's nice to know that they're there. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's kind of what we wanted to be able to do, and that's part of their market and what they do. And uh, so one of the things I want to do is, again, put a link on our site that's going to send you to Buzz Around because you can just check ours out. Well, is there anything else? Let's see what Buzz Around's got. And uh, they will, people tell them more, you know, what they don't tell me. Or you, but you all have email, so there's no reason why you haven't told me that you got something going on. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, do we have anything else here tonight? We got coming up. Veterans got anything going on? Yeah, actually, um, we are. Come, um, come on up so they can, so everybody can see you. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> So for the folks that don't know me, my name is John Drazinskis, and I'm the uh, Senior Vice President of the VFW Auxiliary here in Brockton, post-1046. Um, so the Auxiliary will be having a uh, informational uh, membership recruitment table at the holiday event, the Christmas event, um, this coming, not this coming Saturday, the, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I'm not sure what location we're going to be at. Um, I'm trying to get an, in, an indoor location so we don't freeze, but, um, you know, check us out. Um, you are eligible for the auxil auxiliary if your immediate relative, your father, mother, um, son, daughter, uh, grandparents, grandkids uh, served overseas and saw combat. Okay. So I never served in the military myself, so I am not eligible to join the VFW, but I am eligible to join the VFW Auxiliary. I'm a member here in Brockton because my father was a uh, decorated World War II veteran. Oh, wow. So, so um, please come by. Uh, if you find us, come by and check us out, and I'd be glad to give you more information there. Um, so thank you. Great yes. Well, yeah. Lith Lithuanian Independence Day is February 16th. Okay. Um, it's a funny situation. We have two Independence Days. Yeah. So let me tell you about that. Okay, February 16th was the, the day that uh, Lithuania was um, declared its independence from Tsarist Russia. March 11th is the latest Independence Day where they... <laughs> where they uh, declare their independence from Soviet Russia after 50 years of 
oppression in uh, being a Soviet state. So, but the, uh, the February 16th is actually the more important date, and usually we try to have our Lithuanian Independence Day somewhere around there. It's usually the first, we try to have it the first weekend of March, usually, and it's usually at St. Michael's Parish in Avon. So, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay, um, Pastor, I think that was a good idea. Carl, yes. to let people know yes. about ECA. Our friends at ECA. Oh, thank you. We can talk about the Lebanese for a minute. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I need this. Oh, yeah. chicken. What time is it? Four o'clock. Four o'clock, okay. I know it's on the image, but. So, uh, <clears throat> Carl Pride from Brockton Community Access. Um, and there's no coincidence that you'd be talking about community calendars as BCA. Uh, how many you guys know BCA? You all know BCA? You all been down to the TV studio? Do you all send your announcements on a regular basis to BCA? I've done several P PSAs there. You've done several PSAs, great. Yes. However, do you send your flyers to BCA? Yes. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged, great. Okay. So, so I, I know you were talking about your website. Um, fantastic. And I would love for BCA to have a link to your website. And we'll do the same. And we'll do the same. And uh, as a matter of fact, we have a new outreach coordinator. Her name's Cassie. Uh, next time you call BCA, 508-580-2228, uh, just say, hey, Cassie. And then she'll be like, well, who are you? And, <laughs> and uh, uh, but no, she, she's, she's lovely and she's in charge of our bulletin board. Now, with a bulletin board for TV, I don't have a piece of paper in front of me, but we all, do uh, you have a piece of paper? No. you have a piece of paper? I'm digital. Oh, look at this. There's a flyer over here. <laughs> okay, so we all make our flyers, right? Like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. BCA, we're television. Huh? That's TV. Yeah. Okay. So put your information in this way. That's the way I send it. And send it as a, send it as a JPEG to, you know, a JPEG or a PNG. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it will go on the channel as it is. We don't, you know, it's easier for us to receive it and just put it up on the channel. You know, we don't need to recreate everything because you want it to get out there the way you want it to look. Yeah. So I wanted to mention that. We'll give you back here. Fly. <laughs> <laughs> An excellent flyer. Thank you. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing one turn yeah. sideways. Um, anyway, BCA, uh, we are open to the public. Everyone can come in um, and produce your own programming and produce your programming about your uh, by your organization, uh, you do your service live, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. on Sundays, and do you record it? It's recorded, and we have a YouTube channel. Awesome. And we've had a podcast since 2003. Awesome. <laughs> and, and do you know that you could send that link to BCA to have <laughs> it air on the community TV? I think I knew that. Oh, okay. But I have all right. But now maybe I should. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just saying there's possibilities are endless out there. The VFW Auxiliary, you know, you have activities going on all the time. Now, now, maybe you don't want BCA to do something all the time with you, but we're an advertising stream, a free advertising stream for you. We're also a nonprofit, so we also look for grants too. And... We're open to partner with groups yes. on grants. So if you need a video element of a grant, we'll work with you. Okay, so. The, okay, don't forget how you have podcast training. Oh, yes. yes. Thank, thank you, Ann. Uh, we, we also started a art, uh, a, at BCA, we've also started having an artist of the month, and our curator is Ann. <laughs> okay, we also worked out with the uh, uh, Brockton Gr Garden Club to bring down plants and fill, fill everything. And our contact for that is 
Ann. Uh, and then I got connected with this group, and my contact has been Ann. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, one of the biggest values that I have in this community is support from um, Ann. Ann, for sure. Uh, and, and people that I, I've known over the years, I've been in and out of Brockton a number of times, and, uh, you know, me and Ann celebrate when uh, I came in because we knew we could start doing some great things. We started a podcast room at BCA. We have easy to use three cameras set up. Um, we're now uh, uh, we're now working with uh, doing uh, a play in in our studio, um, oh, nice. right? Doing a play in the studio. Yeah. Uh, we have just since I've started, which was only three months ago. Uh, We've had an increase of about 50 new people coming in to start producing things. So get involved now while you still can, because you always can. Volunteers oh, take on the camera and they get trained? Yes, okay. yes. Thanks for the question, Ann. Yes. <laughs> uh, here's a cool thing about BCA. One thing we have now, you know, yes, we have cameras, we have equipment, and a lot of people get scared that, oh, I don't want spend hours and hours taking a training class and all that, right? Well, our training for our podcast room is 30 minutes. Our training to take out the camera for the first time is 15 minutes. So there's no reason to not come in and start utilizing this service that's available to you in Brockton. That's honestly one of the, you know, I, I have been all across this country. This facility is truly one of the best in the country. And it's all at your fingertips. And all you have to do is ask, how? How can I start doing this? You know? And just come on down. And I'm going to give you all a card. And I want to talk to all of you about what you're doing. Because that's how, you know, this community works. Is we got to talk to each other. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> the two Saturdays ago, we did an I a live traditional Irish concert here, and uh, it was recorded. I used some of my recording equipment, and we got it done. And uh, and then I went by uh, a few days later with it on a flash drive, and so can't wait to see it up on BCA. Did you sing for that one? I did not sing, nor did I dance. I, 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 paid, I paid the band. And uh, with the one thing that was said afterwards by just about everybody in attendance is, when can we do this again? It was so good. And uh, so we will, we usually do one in March during St. Patrick's season. Because it's not just a day anymore, it's a whole season. Um, and the, this particular band will, will come back and we'll, you know, but we also have others that we can choose from that we know. These are, my son's an Irish musician, although he lives in Ireland. And uh, so a lot of his friends have come through. So that was the third concert that we've done here. And uh, when we knew it was going to be a really small group, because it was just so many certain people that were invited, we actually did it up here. The only thing I regret was that we didn't do it with the fireplace running or something, but, you know, that would have been really nice. But uh, but uh, <clears throat> we don't know if the fireplace works. It hasn't been on since I've been here in two th since 2003, so <laughs> uh, I don't want to take that chance. Of course, the fire department is right across the street, so uh, we, we did have somebody fall after service several weeks ago, and... Uh, we, we felt bad that the guys brought the truck out, you know, and I'm like, it's like, this has got to be the shortest commute you've ever had. And one of the firemen said, yeah, I had, this is the shortest one I've had, in, you know, ever. And I'm like, you could have walked across the street, but that's, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they were great, you know, and he said, we want people to know about what, what's happening here. You know, I'd love to do a story, just the fact that, you know, of how the guys responded and how they, you know, our firemen and our policemen, they don't get enough credit. We need to be the, you know, we can be part of the voice to let people know. And I'm so grateful for, you know, what BCA does. And, 
again, if you record it yourself, they'll take it. They'll they'll play it. And uh, airtime is everything. We were when we started the podcast. When I started doing the you know, taking over as past and did podcast in two thousand eight, we were using a service and we were getting unbelievable number of hits. Now at the time, that software, that company, you could pinpoint down who was listening to you. It, you, it utilized a, a feature with Google Maps. And so it, we didn't have many people in Brockton listening, but there was one time there was Brockton popped up in the list. So I clicked on it and I could zoom right down with a satellite picture that it was one of four houses. <laughs> that was pretty cool. But we were getting all kinds of uh, opportunities overseas. In Ireland, in one part of Ireland, there was a college that was listening to it. And then in China, in Beijing, we were getting over a thousand listens a week. A little tiny church in Brockton. I've come to find out, you know, curiosity got the better of me, but I finally found out how that happened. There was the son of a former pastor of this church who lived in Beijing and was teaching English second language and was having his students listen. And I'm thinking like, this is pretty scary if they were learning English from me. Because <laughs> I use a lot of Canadian idioms. That, you know, the only one in the room that understands what I'm saying is my wife. And she's an American, you know, but uh, she spent time up there in Canada with me. So she's like, she understands some of the terminology. But, uh, but it, it, it's amazing how that you can, even our YouTube channel now, there's not a lot of listeners. Uh, there's one, maybe one or two people from the area, people that, you know, can't make it to a service for one reason or another. But we have opportunities in New Hampshire, Maryland, and different parts of the country. People that have some sort of connection to Brockton actually listen to our service and, or watch it. And that's exciting. So, uh, again, I can't wait to um, see a few of these on the, uh, <clears throat> the BCA YouTube. <laughs> I ditched Comcast for TV. <laughs> so I don't get the channels unless I watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep. Thank you. The idea too is when I come up for the announcements, is I want to hint, hint, hint that other people can come up for announcements, you know. But anyway, three of well, four things here. Um, I have a program um, on BCA because that people can have programs, and I've I started mine during COVID because we wanted to highlight positives in Brockton. So anyway, it's been on one year. And uh, the producer primarily is a guy with a tremendous amount of patience, Isaac, which is great, and he's a perfectionist too. But anyway, everybody at BCA is terrific, and they all know what they're doing, and um, they'll just spend a whole lot of time with you going through this. So anyway, what we do um, periodically is this woman named Claire, and uh, we call it Crafts with Claire, where every time that there's like holidays coming up or a season or something, she comes on and she does Crafts with Claire. Anyway, we have a good time with this. And because of this whole BCA and doing YouTube thing, her one of her closest friends lives in Pennsylvania and she gets to see it. So she kind of enjoys that. So it's funny. So see, um, uh, with all this, you can't really do anything wrong. But um, the other thing I want to tell you is um, Pastor Joseph... He is um, an author here in the city of Brockton, and he's a you know Haitian, and he came to the United States in the 80s, and he's written books, uh, poetry, short stories. Um, he wrote a children's book, um, and really young readers, and also his um, historical fiction. Anyway, he's uh, done. He's been doing. He will be doing a virtual presentation at. Um, Brockton Library, 304 Main Street. But anyway, it'll be on, and you know, and if you go on to 
the happening brought in. You'll be able to retrieve the information. And uh, this is on the 29th, and his books are you know, available for sale. And uh, it's pretty amazing. It's very intense because you know, we all understand that a lot of people come to this nation because of the horrors, unfortunately, they've experienced in their own native um, country. And wow. A little intense uh, with you know with with that. On another note, with um, I want to say it goes to show you you know um, World War Two and so many of our World War Two veterans are no longer with us, but um, you know they didn't have TV in those days, but they had radio. And uh, Massasoit Community College is doing a performance on September Saturday, December fourth. Forgive me, and Sunday, December fifth at 1 p.m. and um, you can visit massasoit.edu slash box office or you can call them 508-427-1234 and you know this this always works out terrific and um, they have special deals for veterans senior students and whatever but I just think it's neat that it's going to be in person, a lot more in-person stuff going on, and that's really positive. And since I'm up here, too, and my biasness with um, art and promoting all kinds of talent in the city, uh, yes, we're going to be having our third artist exhibit at BCA, and it's a young uh, girl. Actually, she's 12, and she's doing photography. So this is and this is what everybody needs to understand. You can be 87 and exhibit your stuff, and you can be, you know, 12 and a half, and, you know, you can do oils, you can do acrylics, you can do photography, you can come up with all kinds of stuff, and this is just a, you know, huge opportunity for, you know, your visib you know visibility, et cetera. So cannot emphasize that aspect enough, and I will say that BCA is really great about coming out to events, and they also have started this new whole program thing that is terrific because it continues to highlight all the positives going on in the city. So, in other words, if you are opening a new business, if your business has expanded, if your church is putting up a new monument, I um, mean, it just, they want to hear from you and they want to tape it. Because, again, more and more and more people hear about what's going on in, in all, you know, different interactions. So, thank you. Anyway. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ann. And I, and I will tell you, you know, I have actually had in the, you know, my computer uh, career, I've had opportunity to work in uh, some TV studios. And uh, I was sitting there chuckling to myself. Uh, and Carl was saying, you know, make sure it's horizontal landscape, not vertical. <laughs> and the only thing that came to mind was broadcasting data over the vertical blanking interval. Which, anybody here know what that is? No. Other than Carl? Carl does. <laughs> it's 21 lines of code that are above what you can see on your TV. And it's actually open. That's where they do the, the uh, stock market ticker information <laughs> broadcast there. But I was working with a company that was, that was using several of those lines to transmit high-speed data. This is before Comcast cable type internet. This was before DSL. Oh, you, had, you had rabbit. You, used, you could get the data at high speed using rabbit ears oh, with the interface that the company I was working with developed. And so I got to work in a lot of the studios. I got to work at the WCVB studios there and Vegas and a whole bunch of other places. And it was like, uh, you know, and I saw some of the studios that they were working with. This is a number of years ago. And these studio, this studio here is better, better than some of the ones that I worked in. So um, it's, again, it's a it's great opportunity for us and uh, to be able to promote what's going on here in Brockton because when it goes to BCA, it's archived and we will have a visual heritage of Brockton. That's cool. You can go across the hall here and you can find the, the history book that was written, Mr. Kingman wrote back, way back when, about the history of Brockton and it's a classic. And... Um, not this building, but this property is actually in it. Because in it, he records about the starting of North Baptist Church in 1886. So it's kind of cool. You find yourself in a history book. Um, 
But uh, now, in future generations, they're not going to read the book. <laughs> they're going to watch some sort of digitized video. And we have so many events going on that we need to have the cameras there. And again, if, if BCA can't be there and you are there, how many of you got one of these things? <laughs> they do a pretty good job. Just turn it sideways. Just turn it sideways, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> or all, or, or, or half of your image will be in the VBI, you know. <laughs> but uh, again, there's, it's great to know that it's being used for these things, and and, and that's what I was my next thing. I, I'm looking at a few faces about announcement. Get up you come on up. Get up there. <laughs> it's not the Price is Right or whatever it is, but uh, <laughs> good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. James Bruce. I'm the uh, 17-year Brockton resident. I'm a Bostonian, born and raised in Roxbury, and Mattapan, and Jamaica Plain. And currently, I'm, I wear a lot of hats. I am the owner. Well, first of all, I want to thank um, City Councilor Shirley for inviting me. Yay. And uh, I supported her uh, in her efforts, and, and uh, she's a really, really good person. And I, 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 I met her, and, and um, she's a really good person. And, I, and she told me about... Uh, this event coming tonight. I said, yeah. I drive by here all the time. So now come, <laughs> I'll stop in more often. I am the owner and operator, the founder, owner, and operator of uh, Printed Expressions and Gifts. It's a yes. custom printing shop right next to Dairy Queen, the bright green building. Around the house, oh, around yeah. the corner. Yeah, it's about, yeah okay. Yeah, right there, right there. One block down. And, uh, yeah. and I absolutely. Okay, say that again, Printed Express. Printed Expressions. Printed expressions. Okay. And Gifts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, 1130 North Main Street. Okay. And um, I'm celebrating, actually very happy, celebrating my, into my second year. I opened on, sep thank you, I opened on September 1st, 2020, during the pandemic. People said, mm. who does that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do, we yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm very, very happy about that. Um, when uh, Shirley Asak told me about this event, and I said, wow, this is a really good opportunity to kind of share um, share some love. The love I want to share is it's on a sad note, but it's a glory, glorified note, if you will. Um, I recently lost my baby sister, uh, Veronica Bruce Butler, 48 years old, to double breast cancer, September 2nd, and she was buried on September 14th. She was truly an angel. Yeah, my mother had 10 of us. Wow. Ten of us, and I'm number seven, and she was the last one. She was the baby. She and I were just so close. And if I were, metaphorically, if I was the finger, she was the fingernail. Yeah. We were just that close. Yeah. But what was so special about her journey uh, through battling cancer was that she absolutely, she just loved God. I said, I'm hearing some love. She just loved God. She trusted God. She knew what she was facing at 48 years old. He said, how are you doing? She says, she says, I trust God. Whatever God says, I'm okay with. She says, God got me. God got me. So the year and a half that she suffered, going through chemo, going through it, just transforming physically, um, she just portrayed and demonstrated amazing spirit of love, peace, and compassion for others. And the remarkable feature about her journey, the entire year and a half, she never complained. She never complained. And so when, she, when, when God took her home, she, uh, and again, just left, a, a, left a, like a fuel, burning fuel in, within me. And I recognize that you know, everyone has their own way of mourning and loss and dealing with the loss. And I look back at her life and I say, well, the question is, you know, the, the, the cliche is not what, it's not how long you live, it's how you live. Mm -hmm. It's not what you have, it's what you share. Mm -hmm. It's not what you know, it's what you teach, what you share. And so what she left with us and for me was that real spirit of compassion for others. So uh, less than a month after she had passed, I, um, actually about two weeks after she was buried, I said, 
I have to share that spirit of being, having that faith, having that outlook, just holding on and just embracing God's will. Just embracing whatever God says, I'm okay with it. And so she left that, and I said, well, I have to do something. I have to share this. And so less than two weeks after she was buried, I, I created a foundation. And it's called Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center. And it will be, you know, um, it's established on paper and record. But we're um, seeking out a building to create some space. Uh, people can come and listen to music, pray, meditate. Some space too. They can uh, little cafe area. They can sit on that. Another space to do some arts and crafts, so they can release that. And then some um, little space for a gift shop. So those who are inclined with the arts, we can put a tag in that creates a, a generate a source of income for them. And then there's a meeting space. So we bring in the nutritionists the insurance people, the bankers, the housing specialists, all these services that, that gets, you know, thrown, you know, <laughs> you know, help the scouts around once those are gone, those things are gone. So we did a walk on um, October 24th in DW Field, Breast Cancer Awareness Walk, and God was so good, so good. Um, that was a Sunday morning, and I, I signatured by saying, God showed up, and he showed out. <laughs> The weather was just so perfect for walking. Because the very next morning, it rained like no tomorrow. It was that Monday. It was like, wow, you could. it actually rained on Monday and Tuesday. So I was grateful for that. So during the walk, I was like antsy. I was anxious. I was anxious to get home. Not because the walk wasn't pleasant. I had all these wheels spinning. What's next? What's next? What's next? I have to keep this torch going. Compassion for others. So I got right down there, and I prayed, and I asked God, guide me. And what came out, out of that is um, December, this is the date now, I have this, December 20, uh, yeah, December 23rd this year, and God placed it on my heart with her spirit to create or design, have a, to host a formal banquet for breast, I'm uh, sorry, formal banquet for cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. cancer survivors and because what that is and we hear say, well I'm a cancer survivor well God bless you that's so great oh my friend is a cancer that's great but guess what we never hear their story right. mm -hmm. we never hear their story we don't hear what the reaction was what their response how many friends they gained or lost or how it just changed them so this is going to be a platform where I'm inviting um, survivors of cancer and I want just a spectrum of people I want the young, I want the uh, um, Cape Verdean, I want the uh, Caucasian, I want the African American, I want the, you know, the seniors. I want so people can say, well, that could be me. Mm -hmm. And so these people will share their experiences. Yeah. And so they could say, this, when I, I'm a survivor, and they can say, I survived for 18 years. So in the future, God forbid, we should hear that diagnosis. We don't figure, oh, I'm going to die in you know, you know, three days. We can say we can hold on to that faith. And so where there's hope, there's life. Mm -hmm. And this is that torch that, 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 that's fueling. So I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity to, to share. And thank you again, um, Shirley, for um, sharing that. And this is really about sharing. Mm -hmm. This is the space. This is the space. So I have a, a flyer. And so we are actively seeking those who are survivors or if you know someone who is a survivor. We want to honor them. And we want to celebrate them. It is a, um, it's going to be a banquet. It's going to be on the 23rd, as I said. It's going to be a Teen Challenge. up on, uh, oh, Teen Challenge. Yeah, at, oh, at Teen okay. Challenge. At, uh, at from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. I have flyers and I have that. And I'll, I'll post it on your site as well, if you don't mind. Um, and, again, we're going to have these people sharing. And it's open to anyone who wants to come and celebrate. And the timing, someone said, wow, the 23rd, that's kind of close to the no, but that's a great time because yep. yeah. it's so close to an end of the year. Another opportunity to give praise mm -hmm. for reaching that close even for another year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, do they, the people that want to speak, do they need to call or do they just show up that night and give their story? No. 
if they want to speak, that we'll need to organize. We want to okay. present them and give it like a, you know, just introduce them properly. Okay. And it, it is a fundraiser, so it's going to raise uh, funds for that. And it's a buffet. It's going to be a buffet, some entertainment, mm -hmm. and um, just read. So it's it's open to people who are survivors. We want to say we want to honor you. We also want to give you the opportunity to invite your family and friends. They can celebrate you yeah. during yeah. a family time, holiday time. So nice. at your table, right. and uh, so it's and this all of this is. Is, is part of that that spirit, and again, she just and wanted. She she demonstrated many examples of of that special uh, feature. And I, I I remember um, she did chemo sometimes three times a week, and she'd be almost nearly zapped up. She'd be on her phone. You said you got one of these, and she had a phone, but she was on, spent a lot of time on the phone, on Amazon, um, ordering toys for her friends and families, children. Say happy birthday, you know, your birthday's in two months. Happy birthday. She kind of knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those kinds of things that what I what I think about is like really, really powerful. That so I thank you again for the I better stop because I'm, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> <laughs> well welcome neighbor. I I literally live on around the corner from their business. On on Burkside. What number? The very first house on Burkside, 15. I, I owned a home from 2005 to 2008 until the market crash. It's number 77. Oh, okay. That's the ranch one. That's yep. The yep. <clears throat> my, my wife would know it better because she walks the dog up that way. <laughs> but I watched, I remember the business going in, and the, there's another business there that just uh, opened as well. Yes. Uh, with the... Um, specialized uh, headstones and things like that so yeah it's you know it, it's a neighbor and i the way he was going there i was beginning to get a little concerned i mean i, I mean i thought i was the preacher here um <laughs> but uh but yes it it that's something special when you're dealing with folks that are cancer survivors you know <clears throat> i I can say that I am a pre-cancer survivor. They got it before it became cancer. But I lost my mom to cancer. And, uh, you know, so it is something, you know, that it, it touches every family. There's nobody, there's no family. I'm going through it right now with our neighbor who, you know, more or less they said he won't see the end of the year. And uh, he's stage four, and uh, you know, but he, he lived the life the way he wanted to live it, and uh, he is content. He has good days and bad days, but we can be there, and that's kind of you know, we're, we're there to support each other, no matter whether it's emotion, something emotional like having cancer, or as businesses, we're there to support one another. So you, you need to make sure that I have your card before you leave so I can do something. We can put you at the bottom of the list there. You're one of our Brockton businesses, you know, on the website. And I'll get the link to BCA too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we need to be there for one another. And I, I again, I said earlier, I think people are now really starting to think about our community more. I tried to describe our neighborhood to somebody the other day. Actually, I was doing some research for them on where they came, where their family came from Ireland and trying to describe what a townland is. And a townland is a very small piece of property. It's kind of like, and I described Burkside Ave and a couple of streets over, you know, all in that area. That would be a townland in Ireland and so we've gotten to know some of our neighbors and we've had neighbors over for barbecues and stuff like that it's it that's exciting when I start hearing about things like that happening in different other parts of the city but um, but definitely you know like I say here's a here's another you know business that uh, you know that does gift items and, and printing and you know I, I I go by every day and I'm going like hmm the next time I'm going to do T-shirts or something like that, I gotta stop in there. You know, I like to do business in town. Yeah. Surely. I tell you, the customer service is amazing. Okay. <laughs> and Dr. Brooks is very humble. He's also a published writer. Oh. 
Fifty books. Fifty books? Yes, sir. Wow. Oh, you yeah, Amazon. Yeah. <sighs> there isn't anything you can't do. Uh, yeah. I lost track. I'm some. I think I'm eight or nine <laughs> that I've published over the years, but. Uh, <clears throat> but most of them. Are, are the type that you, you could read will put you to sleep at night because you know technical journals are just you know I remember write, helping write one as uh, on Word Perfect eight and it, okay so this is many years ago and we had to have the book had to be in the bookstores the day they released the product so we were just working with beta stuff and that so. Um, but anyway, it was it, it was fun. I've enjoyed writing over the years, and uh, <clears throat> someday I will find time to do more. <laughs> but not right now. <laughs> All right. Anybody else with anything else going on in Brockton? All right. So the next order of business is the next meeting. You should wait till January? I mean, December's kind of wild. De uh, December is absolutely wild. Yeah. Yep. So I was thinking more of January. And, uh, the second Thursday in January? I'm thinking that, yes. Okay. I don't know what date that is right now, but I suppose if I pulled out my phone and looked at it, I could, I could figure that out. But I, I just thought that would make sense. And, okay. Um, 13th. Our 13th? All right. Yeah, so. Okay. So now, yeah. there is one criteria yes. about having the next meeting on January 13th. Yes. And that is if you're doing anything in December and early January, you email me that information yes. so it can be on the website. Yes. Absolutely. We'll forego the meeting, but email it so that we can get it up there and let people know. And, and, and do what I've been doing. Just tell everybody yeah. that it's out there. You know, it's going to help when it's linked at BCA and, you know, other places link, put a link to it. It's going to help. We want it to people to know. That's why we're doing this. You know, it's, uh, it's, it, it's exciting to see that we can be part of the overall solution for Brockton. Yes. And so now it's really everybody have a safe and happy holiday. Yes. And, uh, because we're going to be doing so much more in. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, and all we get them all into one here. Yes. And uh, you know, again, we're just I'm looking forward to what's going on, and here in Brockton, and uh, you know, keep posted on the website and BCA. You'll see a lot of things. And again, you know, make sure when you send it to BCA, you send it landscape, not <laughs> portrait. Hey, been there, done that. <laughs> so, well, thank you for coming tonight. And yes.